The speed that they were getting the ball forward, it was um, it felt yeah, it was just uh, pedestrian. England at the moment letting uh, GB down. We're letting we're letting United Kingdom down at the moment, you know. And England, the three lines are going to march on to the final. Hello and welcome to Hold the L. My name is Flav, and this is a brand new football debate show on the Super Six YouTube channel. Now you know Super Six is a free-to-play weekly prediction game, but it's changed for the Euro stages. This time it's about having the jackpot that rolls over each week. And last week it did, which means there's big money on the line and it's still free to play. Today we're joined by Akeem, Nini and Steven to go through last night's rather drab performance against Scotland. So Akeem, what do you think of the performance? Pretty drab in my opinion. Um, take any positives from it? Oh, the only positive was the, the one point um, to, to bring England to four points in the, in the group. Look, it was one of those games where it was like, you know, you Scotland have to win or get something from it. We don't really have to because we, we beat Croatia last week. It was kind of that sort of performance. And, you know, there wasn't really that many positives because you're supposed to come into the tournament pr pretty uh, rough, like in the first game and improve game on game if you are going to be a serious challenger. And quite frankly, we've kind of gone backwards. That was a that was the worst performance in the first game, which was already under underwhelming. So. I can't say there's many positives besides maybe Tyrone Mings had another um, solid, solid um, performance. Pickford as well, but that's about it. Stephen, what did you make of it, and and why is is it important to have performances right now? Or is it just as Southgate said afterwards? It's about getting out of the group. That's the only thing that, ma that matters. Yeah, both things are kind of true. Of course, you have to get out of the group, um, but at the same time, international tournaments are about momentum, aren't they? Really, there's only a few games, and you, it's, there's a lot of belief involved in international tournaments because why wouldn't there be? And we we know what that energy can do to a side. We've seen it before, and um, I guess the caveat would be that you know, or the counterpoint, sorry, would be that in the we didn't play exactly set the world alight in the group stages of the World Cup and we got to the semis there so maybe it doesn't overly matter but that performance was drab if I'm being honest um, it was slow it was tepid um, and I think it was unnecessarily slow as well that was the thing I mean I think the forward line will get a lot of stick for it but there was basically no support I mean I guess I'm lucky as a City fan to watch good build up play but the speed that they were getting the ball forward it was um, it felt yeah, it was just uh, pedestrian at times it really was and I was disappointed a little bit in the midfield if I'm being totally honest they're all very good good players but um, I think a lot of the energy and decisiveness that we saw from the first game in the first half in particular from Phillips for example I think he's, he, he was a little bit quiet in this one he didn't get forward anywhere near quick enough I'm not sure if he was sitting a little bit deeper because maybe I don't know the defensive structure was different because obviously Trippier and Walker weren't there I'm not saying Shaw and James did anything wrong but it was definitely a different kind of setup defensively and as a, as a result it felt like Phillips was sitting a little bit deeper for me and I do think we we lost a little bit from the midfield in terms of the pace of getting the ball forward and every time it hit Sterling or Foden or Kane there was just a whole wall of Scottish defenders already there it needed to be moved quicker up the pitch and um, there's nothing their forwards can do at that point you've got a really dedicated Scottish team just sat there all in shape yeah. already and it just felt too slow and that's such an easy word to say but it's why I was, wasn't really sure Greenish was going to make a difference when he came on either because it was the same just swapped to another player to have the same problems but we yeah. there so it was too slow that's, man just too slow that's it and, and, and that's what one of my frustrations were the fact that um, we have such quality in that squad mm. and he used he only chose to make two substitutions yeah Belling in there or, or offer something to, to Phillips um, you, you know if you're bringing Grealish on don't take Foden off leave three of them on leave Mount um, Grealish and Foden on Let's go for him. Just drop, drop the holding midfielder, and and let's go for him. But Southgate said after the game that he he, he understands that fans wanted um, or would would have desired us to t put our foot on the pedal and go for Scotland. But this isn't a time to 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 be risk risky and and, and <laughs> to to and, and and just thinking. All right, well, fair enough. Let's get through the group. But Nini, what did you think? It should should we have been a little bit more risky? Should we try to create momentum? Or as Stephen alluded to before, is that there are teams that go on and do very good things by playing quite conservatively in the group stages. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to what you literally just said right now and it reminds me of quotes from the last game against Croatia where we found out the reason behind why Trippier was playing as a left-back and essentially he was playing as a left-back because he was there to offer more, uh, you know, communication in the back line, the more like leadership presence, um, you know, more experience at the back to help with, with Mings. And immediately I was thinking... 
well, then what is the point of Mings? Because I thought he was in the team because, you know, he brings that leadership to Aston Villa. So now he needs leadership on top of his leadership for the national team. And it kind of reminds me of everything kind of wrong with England, where it's this constant um, obsessive need to protect the, the weakest player all the time. You know what I mean? Protect yeah, yeah. the weakest player all the time instead of finding a system to get the best out of the best players. And one example is Harry Kane. I mean, the way we're using him, actually, if you want to use him better, you'd actually use Calvert-Lewin because that's not how you use Harry Kane. I mean, we, he's world-class for a reason because of his ability to drop deep, get involved in the play. You know, but you can see the options he brings on the counter with the excellent passes at behind. You don't see that for England. And, you know, I think it's, it's quite obvious against Scotland when you see our back line and how deep it is compared to the rest of the midfield and we're only passing the balls out wide. There was like no presence between the lines. There was no presence, uh, you know, move the ball through the middle. And we have many great players who can do that. And it's as Stephen said, bringing on a Grealish just, uh, you know, like for like replacements, that's not really going to do anything. Um, you know, it's that agency that I want to see and you know one midfield I would have absolutely loved to have seen would have been a Rice um, uh, Foden Mount midfield against yeah. a, Scotland, a Scotland team that you know you know exactly how they're going to play that that, that that was going to be blatantly abundant they got a, a decent team with some good players and I knew that it wasn't going to be like a 3-0 win but you know there was no agency in the performance because the manager set, set us out too negative and was too pragmatic as always it was all that, wasn't it? Back and forth, like slowly, like that, and it, and it just felt too, yeah. too predictable. And like, I agree. I, I don't think you lose anything there, you know, if you have someone like Foden alongside, you know, Mountain, Rice in midfield, or a Bellingham or something like that. Because I think that you do need that little bit of energy and a little bit of pace. Um, and yeah. I don't mean pace as in just like just pace for the sake of it. I mean uh, speed of thought pace in, in, the in the centre, pace yeah. of the ball in the midfield to you know just to get forward a little bit. I came reading what uh, some Scottish fans. Uh, been um you know talking about this morning they, they they've been talking like scotland were peak brazil or or or, or pep guardiola's <laughs> barcelona they played england off the park and the reality is they got they got a point now i understand the rivalry and understand why they're they're uh, they're very chipper this morning because they managed to stop us from winning and they've still got a chance if they beat croatia which is a big if to go through now but um, it, uh, do you think the Scottish fans are going over the top a little uh, bit about drawing with England or should they be yeah, happy with it? Yeah, I, th I think obviously they're going a little bit over the top, but sh they should. You know, look, this was a huge game for them. This is a game that, you know, everyone expected them to lose. Even optimistic Scottish fans before the game were, you know, saying, it, you know, we hope for a draw. And, you know, when it, anytime a fan says that, you know, it basically means that you think you're going get, to get hammered. So I think um, mm. Scotland should be happy with it. But I do think as much as um, they are going a little bit overboard, I don't think it's fair that, that there's a narrative that, you know, Scotland uh, were plucky or they, they outworked England. That's the only reason why they, why they got a point. I mean, they could have won that game. You know, to be honest, England, you could say held on. It was a good point for England more than a good point for Scotland yeah. based on the yeah. balance of the game. <laughs> so I think, I think Scotland have to um, hang their, their heads high. You know, at the moment, um, Scotland, just like Wales, are actually playing to their potential and playing as good as they could, if not better than people expected. Mm, yeah. And it's England at the moment letting... GB down. We're letting we're letting United Kingdom down at the moment, you know. So that's all I want to say from from that. Position. We are we are the letdowns of the of the, um, of the island at the moment. Let's be honest. I, I think you're being a little bit harsh on the <laughs> after us beating Croatia and and we're practically qualified, so we can relax a little bit. But yeah, uh, we're not as exciting. That's the thing. The brand of football we we want to see, we're not seeing, and I'm not sure we ever will see under Southgate which is a shame because DT mentioned uh, a week ago that perhaps Southgate, this is a team and, and a squad full of potential and Southgate's the one that's going to waste it. That's not to say he won't go far with England. That's not to say we yeah. won't go deep into this competition. It's just yeah. that we have the talent and the technical ability to play good football. Yeah. I just want to ask you what, what one more question before we round up. Um, is Does this performance against Scotland d dent your hopes? Are you less hopeful about how far we can go after the Scotland game or has it not changed at all, Stephen? Yeah, no, I am, if I'm being honest. It's simply because I don't think this team is particularly brave. Um, and not because of the weight of the players individually, but I don't know, man. I mean, you, you can you can caution your way to victory over time, but I think there's, there's, there's too many good teams in this uh, tournament. And 
Look, the chances we conceded against Scotland, there's a good chance that obviously that we get better defensively. But if that's Belgium or that's France or that's Italy, there's no chance, unfortunately. You know, we saw Kevin De Bruyne's impact the other day, and we saw how good Italy were, and we've seen, you know, obviously the quality of the teams we've not even mentioned yet, like you know, obviously Spain and Germany, all that kind of stuff, and. I don't know. I feel like he can get you so far, but after that, you do need um, to, to have a little life and a little zest to your team. The yeah. players need to believe it as well. And I, I, my, my problem in general with like cautious lineups is that the players usually know it as well. And I've, we've seen this even at City. So I'm speaking from experience here as a City fan. Is like if the players know you're being cautious, the players instinctively therefore are being told to fear this team a little bit. And I think sometimes you know I'd rather a team play to their own strengths, as Nini was saying earlier, than trying to you know spend all much time nullifying their own weaknesses and it's a it's a mindset mm. to me that can be counterintuitive because it actually yeah. you th- you're thinking too insular as opposed to believing we're great and we can beat these you're thinking how do we stop these and you're not really yeah. in the right headspace so I don't really feel that that approach is always the best way to get success personally so it does dent my hopes a little bit Dent, ho- dented hopes uh, Nini any more optimistic than that? Um, to be honest I-, I felt like the game versus Croatia was an intelligent one was a smart one because we saw them doing absolutely anything but um, you know but in this tournament as we've seen with all the big nations you need to have a bit more in your game and you know I've always felt the bottleneck is is, is the coach because you know even before you know throughout the, the nations leagues and the friendlies you know he's never really gone for a, a lineup that involves, you know, many of England's best attacking players. Like, it's kind of crazy that Sancho hasn't featured yet in this tournament. He's been creating goals and assists for fun at Borussia Dortmund. There's there's no role for him in the team because, you know, Southgate looks at these guys and he's thinking, OK, what are you going to do off the ball? And certain players, you know, you, you just can't expect that same type of defensive application. I mean, you know, this is maybe it's a bit of like a, an extreme example, but someone like a Neymar, like if you had a Neymar on your team, you, you know what you're expecting from him. And if you're going to tell him to press from the front and run, then you're wasting everyone's time. And I think that sometimes we have to allow players of that ability to, mm. you know, play with that freedom, that license so and have a system behind hopes. it. Yeah, so de- yeah, I, 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 I do feel for sure. I, I do a feel king. like, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Then it hopes. Akeem, any? I mean, I kind of think I know where you're going to come from. Are you less or more optimistic after this? Um, I'm not any less or more, actually. To be honest with you, um, <laughs> just just because that's I even saw, more depressing. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, because this is the England that we come to expect. You know, um, we still don't know how to play tournament football, um, and we don't know how to play to our strengths. Like what Nini said. You know, look at some of the teams that we talk about: Italy, Netherlands, specifically. They they have Belgium. They clearly have weaknesses, but they're not playing to their weaknesses. They're playing to their strengths. And England at the moment seem to be cautiously trying to play every game as it comes. But momentum, energy and kind of the spirit of attack, kind of like what Steve, uh, Stephen was mentioning, is so important to, uh, to imprint in the group stages. Because when it gets to the knockout phase, you can't rely on having two chances a game or three chances a game and putting two away. Yeah. You cannot rely on that. You have to build a culture that's going to create five, six chances, big chances every single game. And we're not doing that. So for that reason, I'm not any more or less optimistic at all. I've seen this before. uh, And I'm going to say England are going to win it. Still. (laughs) Win win what? The group? group? We're going to come second in the group. Uh, We're going to get the easier side of the draw. And England and the three lines are going to march on to the final and crush everyone in our path. <laughs> That's what I believe. <laughs> All right. You sit Go in your little class. realistic world and I'm going to dream big because I like living in that world. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> remember, we're going to see each other again tomorrow when we record Hold the L, where we're going to discuss who's going to actually win it. We're all going to pick our sides and we're going to go out and defend each, <laughs> each, each other's uh, decision. So we'll see you tomorrow, boys. And uh, thanks for joining Hold the L once again. Come on, England. Make sure you check out tomorrow night's episode of Hold the Yell, where we go through who we think are going to win the Euros. Who's going to go all the way? Can England do it? Maybe. Maybe.